Hello everyone out there in YouTube land, I am Cigar and Bar, and I want to wish you a Happy New Year's! It's New Year's Eve, and I know I've been a little bit absent this holiday season, been fighting a bit of a head cold, and before that, uh, working like a dog. Um, many of you will not know that I work in uh, retail, in photographic retail and photo finishing, and it's a particularly busy season leading right up until Christmas, so I've just been run ragged and then recovering and now the holidays are almost over and I've missed out on posting for a lot of them so I'm gonna make up for that a little bit now it's New Year's Eve and I've got all my food and alcohol purchased I've got my apartment ready I'm just gonna slip some stuff in the oven in a little bit just start heating up some hot hors d'oeuvres and then chop up some veggies so I've got most of my work done uh, for for today got some nice sparkling wine out here keeping cold in nature's refrigerator here in my hut which is not as cold as it needs to be for a fridge but you know very comfortable right now it's a comfortable about eight degrees celsius out here right now with all the windows open and i'm going to enjoy what has long been a holiday favorite one that i've never tried one that i managed to get my hands on this year and i want to give it a shot so i know that people speak very highly of the Gowarth and Hogarth rum flake. Uh, I managed to get myself some from Watch City. They were selling some uh, some bulk Gowarth and Hogarths, uh, so I got uh, eight ounces of rum flake here. Now, I know I've tried their rum twist, but it was quite a long time ago, so I'm looking forward to giving this one a shot today. I do have a couple of Christmas tobaccos that I'm going to be enjoying coming up this week. Uh, contrary to what, what retail advertisement would have us believe, the 12 days of Christmas do not lead up to Christmas. The 12 days of Christmas start on Christmas Day. And that puts us firmly in the, the late middle of the 12 days of Christmas right now. So I feel comfortable in doing my Christmas themed stuff all week. Uh, and uh, for a couple, couple more days next week, or next year, as the case may be. And if all else fails, if I get really behind on stuff, I can just uh, do an Orthodox Christmas on the Orthodox calendar later in January. Smoking this in my 2020 Savinelli St. Nicholas pipe, which I really like. I like this one a lot more than this year's Savinelli Christmas. Uh, nothing wrong with this year's, I just, I really liked the white on dark with that red band. It was a really nice, really nice look to it. And it's got a very deep bowl in this particular shape, which is the 616KS. So before I light up the pipe here, it's gonna give you some jar notes. It smells sweet. Not quite like a rum molasses, but sweeter than a raisin taste. It's uh, been sitting in the bag for a little while, so it has dried out a little bit, but still plenty mo moist. It isn't like dry, dry. So I'd say this is ideal level of moisture for smoking a pipe. Yeah. Just smells sweet and creamy, so I'm looking forward to that because I like my tobaccos and I like my rums. So how can it go wrong? The answer is very. It could go very, very wrong. Um, I'm... <laughs> Thinking back to my recent tasting of the Sutliff pumpkin spice, which tasted like a coconut rum. And while I like coconut and rum, that was not an ideal flavor on that particular tobacco. If you want to see that video, that was in Two Seasons, Two Tobaccos. I'll put a link for it right up there. Nice full bowl there. I like to do the fold and stuff with my flake. So it's fairly dense in there. I can know down in the comment section from any of you viewers out there, what tobaccos to you really speak loudly to you of Christmas or the holidays? What, what is it that you reach for? And I don't mean uh, trying Cornell and Deal's Christmas blend every year or going back to them just because it's Christmas because I like to do that too. In fact, next week I'm going to be smoking the Cornell and Deal We Three Kings. I'm going to be trying some more specifically Christmas-themed tobaccos. But like the rum flake, that's not... 
themed or marketed as a Christmas blend. What out there really speaks to you as you being Christmassy? What kind of flavor profiles, what kind of uh, brands really come to mind when you think of Christmas? Subtle so far. It's got a subtle mouthfeel, but it's creamy. It's got a creaminess to it. There's more flavor. Yeah, that's very nice. It's very subtle. Hint of spice right at the end of the retro hail. It isn't a spice bomb up front. Not sure if I taste a rum sweetness. It's coming across a little bit like an almond sweetness. nice. I can see why people reach for this at the holidays. Something subtle and comforting when a lot of the flavors at the holidays are just beating you over the head. A lot of uh, mulled wines and sugar cookies and plum pudding. And there's, there's a lot of textures and flavors. And don't get me wrong, food and drink is my, my favorite part of the holidays. That and you know, spending time with family and friends. So hands down over, over gift giving. I prefer the sitting down, the breaking of bread and the sharing of uh, a dram. You know, a, a glass or a drink, that's really where it's at for me. It's not really changing much. So far it's been pretty much one note. A little sweet with a hint of spice on the tail end. You can see here what I was talking about the other day, that uh, when this is all buttoned up except for this window, the smoke tends to curl its way right out this little gap here. Instead of the glass here, it just goes out through, through right there. And uh, it does tend to ventilate the, the hut quite well, so I'm not worried about getting smoked out. And that is not always true with a cigar. Pipe smoke seems to be of a heaviness and a quantity that uh, it ventilates fairly sufficiently. Cigar smoke, not the same thing. With cigar smoke, it frequently fills up in here and gets really smoky fast, hard to see. Uh, it says burn of the eye, so I need to open up a window over here, or even a window over here for a cross breeze, even with there's a, there's a wall right behind that. The spice is increasing in intensity. I'm actually surprised that a uh, folded flake is burning this fast. I uh, had a full bowl and I'm more than a third, less than a half, through this bowl already. And I'm sure I'm going to cut this down in post, but I've been recording for almost 13 minutes, and I'm already getting down that fast. I do like this pipe. It's got a nice feel in the hand. I like some substance to the shank, and I do like some something to hold on in the hand it's it's a good size i'm not sure how much of a traveling pipe this is it's a little bit large uh, it's um it's not necessarily just a balcony pipe this is also my first use of one of the Savinelli six millimeter charcoal filters. I bought a bunch of them after I uh, loved so much the nine millimeter Peterson charcoal filters uh, in uh, my Brebbia Sun. Loved that, I thought it made uh, for a great smoke. So when I saw that they had the six millimeter charcoal filters available for six millimeter filter pipes, I thought, hey, I'll give those a try. And uh, so far, I have to say, nice and clean. Uh, I wasn't really sold on how effective the balsa filters were, the triangular ones from Savinelli. And I'm sure they were doing something that's better than nothing, but not quite as good, I imagine, as what the charcoal filter is doing. 
to uh, for a true test, I'd have to smoke the same tobacco back to back in the same conditions uh, with the, the two different filters and one without for a control. But uh, who knows? I got plenty of time. Might spend a little bit of time doing a little extra smoking experimentations coming up for, for the last few days of my Christmas holiday. Gonna take a break here and come back later on in the bowl. I'm just past the mid bowl now and I'll make my executive statement on this particular tobacco. I said that the Sutliff pumpkin tobacco tasted like a coconut rum with an overly greasy, buttery mouthfeel. If you want to go with that kind of toasted almond, toasted coconut rum flavor with a creamy mouthfeel, this is the way to go. This is not what, what, what the Sutliff pumpkin space is trying to be, but this is a superior flavor to what the Sutliff pumpkin spice ends up being. It's, uh, it's in the same wheelhouse flavor-wise for me. Just world's better. <laughs> and that's to be expected. I don't want to go on record trashing either Sutliff or aromatic tobaccos, but Gareth and Hoggerth, they got something going here. I don't know if anyone's clued into that yet, but they're pretty good. Well, I've got my tasting notes in the bag for this particular tobacco, last new tobacco of 2021. Hoping that 2022 affords me a lot more tobacco, so I'm going to go ahead and dirty my palate while I'm smoking some rum flake and uh, enjoying a little bit of rum with that. This is one of my favorite sipping rums. It's the El Dorado 8. This one is a nice, another buttery, creamy kind of rum, so I'm hoping it'll go well with this. You'll note this is not a particularly full bottle of El Dorado 8. There's a reason for that. It's good stuff. And I've been uh, festively enjoying myself this week. I'm going to thank everyone out there in YouTube land for having been a part of my YouTube journey so far. It's uh, the end of this year, my first year on YouTube comes to a close. I'm going to hope you're here with me for the coming year. Hope you've all had a wonderful, happy holiday season, and I hope you're all hunkered down and nestled in and ready to enjoy a happy New Year's Eve. And I will see you tomorrow. I'll see you next year in Pipe Corner. Cheers. <laughs>